Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the City Skylines Beginner's Guide. Today we will be going over various notifications you may receive within your city and how to resolve them. We will also be expanding our residential but in a more purposeful way by also planning transit at the same time, as well as upgrading our trumpet interchange and I'm going to show you guys why we need to do that. This episode also marks the addition of the Green Cities DLC which we will be diving into a little later in the episode. So let's get started. The first thing that I wanted to go over was a couple of comments that I had gotten. So one of the biggest comments I had gotten was referring to the amount of trees that I'd put in my agricultural area. So I really wanted to go over this with everybody. So if you go up here into the info views tab and go all the way down to your natural resources, you will begin to see all of these little tabs that we had kind of gone over in the last episode. So this is oil, this is ore, this is fertile land for agriculture, and these little green patches are trees for forestry. And so you can use these for the industries DLC that you've got with the industries, or you can use these with the generic specialization that actually comes with the base game. And so if you place these over those little green patches, let's go back into our natural resource tab, you will get extractor buildings. And if you do a forestry business over here, you can place tree plantations and you can begin to harvest those trees. So the reason we're going over this is because as you place down trees, you can actually create these little green pockets. And so one of the things that the game does is it doesn't allow you to have agriculture on top of these green sectors. And so one of the biggest comments I'd gotten was to be careful with placing these around. And you can kind of see all of this was yellow. And we do have a little tinge of green coming in here. But you can kind of see that these higher concentrations are really where they are. And even with all these trees, we've still only turned it a little green. There's still a little bit of yellow in there. All these buildings are still yellow and so the worst case scenario is that we have lowered our production output by a little bit so if we go in here and look at so 7152 units let's go ahead and jump into our garbage and industry tab and go over to the farming industry and look at what this building is supposed to do let's go into this and see so small crop field we're supposed to get about 4800 so we are still well above what our standard yield is for this but you can kind of see these ones are a little bit lower and this has to do with those trees so like this one right here because it doesn't have trees it's getting 7,000 because this one has trees right next to it, it's only getting 864 so this is something that you want to pay attention to but even like these ones they're still getting a lot this one's kind of on the edge of the yellow as well if we go all the way down we can see that our yields are still pretty comfortably above what they should be and you can see like this one because it's got a little more trees around we did we did hurt that ground a little bit but honestly, I'm not really worried about it because I think what we gained, the overall look of this area is better than what we lost with the agriculture. But it is something that you want to pay attention to. You don't want to go in and get crazy and just start placing huge amounts of trees into your agriculture because you'll end up making it so that it'll give you a notification that'll say there's no resource below it. And you see that a lot with oil and ore, but um, with agriculture, you don't tend to see it as much unless you place one of these buildings um, outside of an agriculture area. So if we take one of our crops and place it like right here where there is no yellow. So if we go in here, if we place one right over here, then it's not gonna harvest anything. The ground is not fertile. And so the next thing I wanna do is actually go in here and we want our notifications to be on. You can kind of see these little boxes. That was looking for trash, which we already kind of had an issue with in the last episode. But I wanted to go over some bigger ones so we can see that these little guys right here and this little guy. So this one right here means that this building has been abandoned. So if we hover over that box, it says building is abandoned because there were not enough workers, which is a huge issue in your city and in real cities as well. So if we come over here to this little tab, this is a building that is not abandoned, but it does have a notification. It says not enough workers. Make sure there is free residential area to allow people to move into your city. So what this is doing, and this one's even red, this means that it is urgent, not enough workers. That means it's about to go abandoned. And so one of the things with the industry's DLC is that the game will actually prioritize this industry over this industry. So if you keep expanding out your agriculture, or if we were to expand and do a forestry business or do like oil and ore, we would end up having a ton of issues in our generic industry. And so that's something that you wanna be careful of. So if we come over here, we can see that we have another abandoned building. So if we grab that building and hover over the abandoned icon, it says building is abandoned because worker education was too low. And so what that's telling you is that you have gaps in your education. So if you go into the info views and go down to education, you can choose all these little tabs. And what it's going to do is show you the overall coverage and availability for whichever tab you choose. So we're within elementary, 
If it's blue, that means they have graduated from elementary school. If you choose the building, it actually gives you this little readout. So you have two uneducated, which means they haven't gone to even elementary. Educated means they have gone to elementary school. Well-educated means they have graduated high school and highly educated means they have graduated university. And so these are things that you definitely want to pay attention to. Education level is intimately linked with land value. And so as your city expands, if you can get everybody to be college graduates, then all of your city, all of your buildings will become level five. You start collecting more in tax income and it really is just overall better for your cities. And so let's go ahead and jump into our high school now. So this is kind of a different story than what we were looking at with, with our elementary. So our tab is still, we still have a decent amount of availability, but we can see over here where we built all this residential, we got a lot of red, which means these people haven't even gone to high school and graduated. We have 10 uneducated and nine educated over here. So what this is telling us is it would be good for us to either build another high school over here or maybe set up like a bus system that is going to help people to get over to the high school. And so this is a way that you can better manage your city. Let's go ahead and jump into university. So we don't have any universities in our city, but it's kind of weird. You can see that there are blue in here. So what this means is that these people have either moved into your city and already previously graduated from high school or they've actually gone to high school outside of your city. And so this is something that you'll see with smaller zoning. So if you do a bunch of small zoning early on in the game, you'll tend to get this blue really quickly and you'll actually end up getting really high land values because of it. But even over here, like we already have somebody who's graduated, two people who have graduated college when we don't even have a college in the city. And so that is something that still does happen, even if you don't have uh, universities in your city. Now that we went over that, let's go ahead and jump into our next thing, which is to start designing out our road layout. So the first thing I want to do, we have three squares already out of nine. Let's go ahead and jump into areas. And I want to purchase this square because it's going to give us access to that rail line, which is going to be super important for us. But then it's also going to open up this whole area for us to do another residential expansion. So the goal is to reach 15,000 population. I don't know if we're going to get there. I know we were about a thousand share on the last episode, over 5,000 per episode. But um, let's go ahead and look at our resources for this. So we have no oil in this area. We have a pretty decent amount of ore. So we may need to, you know, pop up an ore mine. That That is a very good generator of money for your city. We have almost no agriculture. And we have a, a decent amount of trees. Not a lot, but um, it's not bad. And so we do gain that train access, which is very important for our cities. And so what I normally do, and I'm, you know, I definitely am not the best at this, but it is something that I try to think about. So the reason why I like to leave a lot of gaps in here is so that we can come back through and add things later. So one of the, one of the transit methods that I really enjoy using is above ground Metro. And so what we can do with our couplet is actually have an above ground Metro run in the back of our commercial. And so this is a great use of this space. We can put in a couple stations and really promote a lot of people to start using our mass transit rather than our roads. And so let's go ahead and start dealing with our road layout. This is a good time to start upgrading our roads. Do we need to go through and upgrade them all away from dirt? We don't. Um, dirt roads are a lot cheaper to maintain. Even in real life, road maintenance is a huge deal. It comes out to about like anywhere from 2,000 to 100,000 plus per per mile of road for annual maintenance and that is a lot um and so and that really varies on a number of factors like it's a huge huge variance but um it is something that you want to think about and there are a lot of cities out there that are actually downgrading their paved roads to dirt roads just to save on that money and so the first thing i want to do is go ahead and upgrade this road all the way around and the reason we're going to do this is because i kind of made a mistake when i was looking at this before so i didn't want to initially upgrade it because those parks well, this is going to be a pretty important street for us, especially as we build our downtown. And so it would be in the in the city's benefit to actually just, you know, demolish these parks and rebuild them, upgrade the road and then not have to worry about it. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. And we'll see as we expand further out that this will become a pretty important connection for this area. Our goal is to be able to funnel people out of the downtown. And so to have people come up the freeway is their primary method. If somebody lives over here, we now have created an alternative route that doesn't require them to get onto the freeway and thus congest the freeway. And so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and just upgrade the rest of these little roads real quick. And then I'll go ahead and run through my reasoning whenever I am done. Okay, so I have, I am done upgrading. And so the main areas that I did, I did our whole office area and I did have to delete a little bit here just because the roads were a little tight. I did our library. I did have to delete this as well. And then I did a couple crossover streets just because these would be streets 
that are a little more highly used. And this is something that city planners do in real life. Um, they'll wait to upgrade certain roads to say bigger roads, add more lanes till use starts to increase. And so they'll start off with like a two lane road, then go to a four lane road, then a six lane road or an eight lane road, or even a 10 lane road if everybody starts taking it. And so um, one of the cool things that I'd read is that most arterials actually aren't planned out as arterials. They start off as a collector, just a regular road. And then what happens is so many people begin to take that route that it eventually gets upgraded into an arterial. And so that's definitely something that you wanna think about. You don't need to have your road layout perfect at first. You just need to upgrade roads as it goes. And as you see people taking, you know, bigger routes like this one right here, we see all these trucks because we know they're trying to get over to the freeway. So it's better to upgrade that road. Maybe sometime in the future, we'll have to upgrade this to a four lane, maybe even move this building, like how we had to move the parks and stuff like that. And so that actually made me think about this. We do still need to uh, put in our park over here. And because we're a little tight on space, what I'm going to do is actually put in this little guy right here. And we'll actually put it off that main road just because we can. And then let's go into our sports parks. And this was something that a couple people had commented. We didn't do any sports for our uh, our high school. And that would be uh, that would be pretty important and also realistic. You know, having basketball would be a pretty big thing for your high school. And so now what I want to do is go ahead and jump into a four unit road. And what we want to do is create another little collector over here. And we do need to do some changes. We need to move our bus depot. So we're going to grab this. And this would be incredibly unrealistic, but... Um, they would have probably anticipated that growth before they placed that building there or otherwise they would have just been stuck and maybe claimed an imminent domain or something like that. So we do want to come up over here. We want to go up four and we're a little weird. It's actually, we're on the biggest step. So we do want to come over here, make sure we're on the small step, come up over here and go up four. And then we want this to curve across. And the reason we're doing this is because it's going to be really hard for us to get all the way across this without having some sort of curve like we need to have this go straight like that and so now what we want to do is go ahead and bring this down and we want it to be parallel with the other roads so what we're going to do is extend this out we're actually going to turn it this way and we're going to have it line up with that road and then connect up and the reason for that is because we want it to still look good and so if we look at our little hills now you can kind of see this is just this looks really bad so what we'll do is jump into the bulldoze tool, go ahead and bring this back. And then we'll go back into our tree of choice and we will start up here. And we'll go ahead and just connect this up, but you can kind of see, so it's aiming this way. Let's go like this and let's go two down. And then now we can connect it up over here and it's just going to look a little bit better. It's not much better, but it's just because we're dealing with that hill. And this is something that happens in the game quite regularly, but it does look a little bit better. And so another thing that we can do on this side, let's go ahead and trim that back. We'll go into our freeform tool. We'll line it up with this road. And then what we're going to do is go down two, and then we're going to go straight. We're going to just force that to be a little bit better. You see that? That just so much more gradual, more realistic. And it's just by using those steps instead of having it go all the way down to the ground. All right. And so now what I want to start doing is laying out a bigger grid network with our collectors. And this is something that real cities use for a number of reasons. Las Vegas, where I grew up, actually has these. And they're called like county miles or county grids. And it's something, it was a way that the United States had helped to lay out parcels within the, you know, the West Coast whenever they were first expanding it. And it's just something that a lot of cities have adopted as their grid networks. And what they do is they actually will orient it north, south, east, and west. And the reason they do that is to make the city easier to navigate. And so it's, it's kind of funny growing up there. One thing that I always knew, I always knew which direction I was facing. So I knew that if I was facing north or south or east or west, and it wasn't until I moved somewhere else that I realized that that's not something that is common everywhere you go. In a lot of cities, you can, you know, their, their roads are just kind of curving all over the place and it becomes really disorienting to where you can get lost pretty easily. If you are new or you say you're a tourist or you, you don't know the area, or even if you move there. And so it is something that has a ton of benefits for our cities. What we're going to do is do a 10 by 10. So we're going to go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is also going to help us create a nice pattern for our city. So then we're going to come down three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is something that I have used quite extensively in my cities. So now what we want to do, we're a little off from this. So I actually would prefer to just line this up. Um, I want to, even though this is going to be off just a smidge, I want this to be uh, lined up with that road. I don't want to uh, kind of mess that up. So I do want this now to come up over here and within the grid, you want to have a couple really interesting formations as well. 
So I want this freeway to come up and provide access to this area, even though we're gonna be fo focusing a lot on me metro and train and, and transit and accessibility, we would still wanna provide access to this area. So since this does not have any highways, what could happen is if you start building out here and you, you know, say you purchase these squares or this square, you get this one too. Well, all these people are going to want to travel this way to get onto the highway. And so you need to have some sort of access over there. So you can do just a regular road that you use as, as an arterial. You don't put zoning on it and that will work just fine. Or you can extend your highway out. And so what I'm thinking is we're going to wrap this around and actually connect it up over here. So people way back here will be able to hop on the highway get all the way down here and leave your city pretty easily without having to deal with lights or um, congestion within your city. And it's just a really smart way for you to manage traffic, especially as you expand. And so one of the things I do wanna do is make sure that we're lined up with this. And so it's kind of funny, we just built this in the last episode, but we're gonna upgrade it now. And I kind of did it on purpose because I wanted to show you guys an easy way to do a vanilla trumpet interchange. And so I'm glad that we did that. Um, but now we're going to, I'm gonna show you guys an easy way to do a vanilla partial cloverleaf interchange. And so this is actually kind of exciting. We're gonna be building a couple new interchanges. And so now you guys will be able to build one pretty easily. Um, this one definitely does take a little more steps than the other one, but it still comes out looking pretty good and it's not too crazy. So now we're gonna come across and what we're gonna do is go all the way up because I want to orient our collectors with this. Even though this may not be perpendicular with our other roads, we still do want to be mindful of its location. So we want this to come all the way up there. And so what I want to do is start creating a little interest in here. So if we go ahead and curve this down and connect it up right there, what we can do is do a zoo or some sort of future use in here, which I think would just be really fun. And so if we come in here, let's go ahead and delete this, bring this up and then go back into our other road, go ahead and bring this down and then connect this up we go like right there just little fixes like that can really go a long ways to create a little more interest in your city and so now what i want to do is go ahead and create a little frontage road for our highway so if we come all the way down here what we're going to do is we want to be a little bit out just so that we can fit some zoning in there if we want but we're going to go ahead and place it on both sides so we're going to come all the way down here we're going to copy that distance looks like we're a little bit further on this side which isn't the end of the world but now we want this road to come across and connect up with this road. Nice. And so now we have kind of broken up our orientation a little bit. It's not the end of the world because now we can connect that up, go ahead and get rid of that. And we have created a frontage road following this road. We will actually have this road come down and then connect up with this road. Um, we did kind of mess up our little tunnel in here so we can actually get rid of that now. And then what we'll do is have this curve up and probably go underground and connect up with that highway just to uh, increase that connectivity a little bit. And so we already created this curve in here to create a little more interest. Let's go ahead and come up this way and connect this up. And so now what we can do is actually use this road with our grid to make it even more interesting. And so I do wanna connect up this highway in a couple other spots as well. So let's um, first come up here, let's delete this, upgrade this, and then we want this to curve up. So we will have this go straight go like this and then have it go, go into the free form tool and connect this up and then we will go straight again and we're going to have this just break up this this little neighborhood a little bit and so we still are keeping with that 10 by 10 grid within here we're a little bit wider on this side but what we do is we create some bigger areas to do something fun in here and so this is already looking pretty good Let's go ahead and start working on this interchange and then we will continue working on the road layout. So let's go into highways. We want to go into ramp, highway ramp. And we want to go into the free form tool and a couple things that you need to do. You need to make sure that this is kind of far out. Let's make sure that this is facing the right direction first. So if we go like that and then let's come all the way down here and do the same thing. We'll go like this. Perfect. And then let's jump back into that free form tool. And we want to go like right about here and we want this to be parallel with our highway because then now we can turn off snapping and have this continue on so we're going to have this continue straight go about like right there and then we're going to cut across the highway we can actually turn on snapping now since we want that to be uh, parallel and so similar to the trumpet you want this road to be on the leftmost portion of your circle so you got to kind of visualize the circle and so now we will go back into our dirt roads and we're going to keep snapping on we're going to come out one and what we're going to do is go down one so we'll come out like right there and then we'll go ahead and jump into the middle and we'll come up like right there and then we're going to do the same thing here but we're going to go down to the ground 
And so that's going to allow us to have that same curve similar to that trumpet, but keeping your curve looking good. Like you can kind of see that swoop. It just looks really good rather than kind of just bumpy and all over the place. And so if you're having issues with the pillars, you do need to come in here and just kind of delete stuff. Make sure you don't get too crazy with it because you may lose your uh, kind of orientation with the road. You really don't want that to happen. So we're going to go ahead and keep this like right here. Let's go ahead and turn off snapping so we can kind of eyeball that a little bit better. So if we go right there, that right there looks perfect. So now let's connect this road back up. So we'll go all the way across. Looks like we're a little messed up. Let's bring that back just a little bit more. We'll come across like that and connect that up and we can upgrade this loop all the way around. We'll go like this and then let's go ahead and delete those little corners and look at that. It already looks pretty good. And so now let's do the same thing on the other side. Look at this, we're already doing so good. So we're gonna go ahead and bulldoze this little intersection. And if you find that your curve is a little off like this, what you can do is actually just delete those two sections. Make sure snapping is on, go into the free form tool and have it just come down and guide with that road. So let's actually bring this up just a little bit more so we can get that uh, road guideline. So if we go like this, what we can do is actually line it up with this other one down here. It looks like it's gonna be kind of tricky for us. So let's actually just free draw. So we're gonna come down here and we want it to go like right there. And then let's let's check it out now and see if we if we did it successfully. Oh yeah, that looks so much better already. And so now let's redraw this in now. So we're gonna bring our roads up. Let's go ahead and turn on snapping. We want this to be go all the way across and then connect up with that. So we want this to do the same thing. So we're gonna come across and it looked like it was blue for a second. <laughs> So now we will go like this and then turn on snapping, reconnect that up. And so now what we need to do is do our two flyovers and then we're gonna work on our same side crossovers. So because this game is so hard to get flyovers, what I'm gonna do here is actually do fly unders and we're gonna do some tunnels. So we're gonna come down here and we're going to bring this out and we're actually going to turn off snapping so we can eyeball this. We're gonna have it go all the way down here and then we're gonna have it drop into a tunnel. And the reason we're doing this is because it just makes it so much easier to capture that perfect turn in here rather than just having to deal with this road. This is just something that the game uh, kind of struggles with is um, interchanges, it's just something that the game can't do very well. And so now let's come up here. It does look like we may need to delete some roads, which is okay. We can kind of just, you know, play it around. This would be a scenario of imminent domain for, you know, better, better uses in the future. Let's go ahead and jump up and see if we can get across that though. Oh, you know, we actually did. Nice. So let's bring this across and then let's go ahead and connect it up. Let's check that out though and see how it looks. You know, that actually looks pretty good. I like that quite a bit. That, um, that turned out much better than I was thinking. And so now we need to do the other side. So let's come across here, do the same thing. And I'm just going to basically draw this in exactly how I did before, but going from this side to the other side. And voila, so I ended up doing this road going this way and you can kind of see with that angle again, it looks pretty good and it's not too crazy. And so now what we need to do is our same side connections. So what we're gonna do is come in here and these are kind of tricky. So we want this to come across and then go down and we wanna bring it down too so that it's one above the ground. You see how it's kind of tapping the ground? So we wanna come up one, go down and then actually connect this up just like that, perfect. And so this side is gonna be a little tricky. It looks like we're gonna have to delete a little bit of this. So I'm gonna pause the game and then come all the way over here, just delete this little corner real quick. And I would prefer not to delete stuff, but because this is such a big project, it is something that probably would happen in real life. Yeah, if we go like that, how does that look? So this looks a little weird. What we can do is actually go from the other side. Because this is such a tight space, this would just be a really hard one to do, especially with all the homes. So what we're gonna do is actually come this way and then go down here. Let's go down one and then we will come down here and then go down one again and then connect this up. So if we go right there, how does that look? You know, that actually looks pretty good. That's probably the best we're gonna get it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do for this side is because we're a little tight on space, we really can't do it in the same fashion that I would have preferred, but it does look like we need to uh, move this park. So I'm actually gonna delete it and then come back here and we are gonna have to remove one of our poor basketball courts. But again, this is in the name of progress. So we're going to have this go this way, drop down just one, and then have it follow this down. And I want to extend this highway just a little bit, this uh, on-ramp. So we'll grab that and we will go into the freeform tool and we'll have this follow along. And so we want it to go like right about here and then dump in. Let's actually have it go a little bit further. So we'll go right there and then go in. And so now what we can do is grab this and it looks like we're just a little off on this. 
which I kind of wish it was a little more centered. We're actually going to just move this over a smidge and then move this one over as well. And so now we can grab this, have it follow along. Let's go down one more and then let's dump it in. Let's look at that grade. So that looks pretty good. Yeah, this, this connection is definitely one that I wish was a little bit better, but again, because of our space, we're already forcing them to uh, kind of split up rather quickly. And so now all we need to do now is this last connection. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. And so one of the things you can do with especially connections like this is, go ahead, let's delete that. And then let's go into a two, <laughs> it looks like we don't even have a two lane. So um, we don't even have that option. Uh, once we get some more DLC, I think it's the mass transit DLC or possibly even the after dark, we actually get a two lane highway. We can have this dump into a two lane and then it just makes it a little bit better use, utilizing those lane mathematics. And so now we do want to make sure that all these roads are facing the correct direction before we unpause. Looks like we're pretty good. So we came up here, we got this, we got this one coming up over here, connecting up. And so now we should be able to unpause it. But before we do that, because we're not going to be working on this section down here for quite some time, possibly at least two or three more episodes, um, let's go ahead and connect this up and let's actually go a little bit further back. Let's go like right here. And then let's do our little trick. So we're going to go one above the ground. So we'll go right here and then we're going to go down to the ground right there. And then we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to go one above the ground and then we're going to go down to the ground. And what we're going to have to do here is kind of finicky. We're going to have to play around with this. So what I want to do is connect up some one ways since we already know these are going to be uh, a little limited. So we want to go like this. And so now what we need to do is create a connection that's going to go around. And this actually works out because we do want to have our couplet connect up anyway so we'll have this go this way and have it be a one way that just kind of loops around and so anybody who's coming up over here they can now get off um, sadly anybody who wants to get off here they do have to follow this around and go up to this road but now we have created a connection down here and this is not a permanent connection and this would not be something that would happen in real life it's just because of this dotted line right here that we uh, are limited by this and so now we should be able to unpause and what I want to do is create a service interchange over here. So we are going to create a same side interchange on both sides. So I want to grab this and we're going to loop this around and we'll go like right here. We want it to go parallel with that. And we're going to go down until we're one above the ground. And then we're going to loop this in. And so I want to do the same style connection on this side. So I want to go a little out. I want to try to mimic that as best I can. So we're going to go out like right here and then we're going to go straight and we're going to actually turn off snapping so we can try to uh, get that perfect symmetry there. We're going to go one above and then we're going to try to cut this into the same node. And this is going to be kind of tricky. Um, this is something where in the base game, they really don't like you doing this. And so we may need to even upgrade this to a bigger road, which is OK. It's something that I was kind of thinking about that we might have to do anyways. So what we're going to do is actually try to upgrade just this little bit. So if we grab this, have this go straight, just a smidge. We don't need to go too far. So we'll go like right here. That way, what we can do is hook up our one ways into this. So we'll grab this, have it go like right there. And then we'll do the same thing here. Let's go one above the ground. We'll go like that and then have it dump in right there. Fantastic. And so we're now going to flip this one around. And so now we have a same side connection where it's going to kind of help to split up traffic. And so what we want to do now is um, go ahead and make another connection on the other side. I'm going to do the same exact thing over here. And there we go. And so now we have created a unique service interchange that is going to help split up traffic. And so we could still experience some traffic with this. This is definitely something we want to keep an eye on. Um, but now we've created some accessibility, which is fantastic. I've unpaused it. And so now we have cars potentially coming through. I don't know if anybody's using them yet. If you want to check it out, what you can do is go into info views and go all the way down to this traffic routes. Go ahead and click on one of the roads. So we'll come down here. Let's actually get out of roads first. And then we'll go ahead and select that road. Doesn't look like anybody's using this one yet. Ooh, we got a couple people using this one, which is great. And this one actually kind of makes sense. So, oh, and you know, we uh, we totally messed up this road down here. Look at this. So, uh, yeah, this would not be good. We, um, we do not want this. We want to upgrade that. And so let's go ahead and check that again now. Hopefully that fixes it because it did look like we were starting to have some issues. So we'll get out of roads. Go ahead and connect that. For some reason, it looks like cars are actually stopping to go up this, this road. So what we can do is what this does is it actually shows us that there may be a problem with the connection. Let's go ahead and check underground. 
So it looks like we're pretty good. This is pretty good. It's all one way. And we can go ahead and go underground by hitting page down. We're following it. Yeah, we're coming up. Yeah, it doesn't look like we have any issues. I wonder what's going on. So sometimes you can create an issue inadvertently by having nodes too close or something like that. Uh, it's definitely something that you most experience with, with mods. Um, oh, let's see where they were go. Yeah, so now it's working, perfect. So now it looks like we have traffic coming from both directions, which is fantastic. And so we shouldn't really have any issues. We shouldn't have, have any traffic going the other way just yet. And so now let's move on. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into our little collector road over here. Let's turn on snapping. Let's go ahead and jump out of this road view if we can. Oh, it's because we're below ground. And let's bring this down and we want to go like right about here and then we want to go underground. And so we are going to have to be mindful of this other tunnel. And so what you're going to need to do is go a little bit deeper. So I'm actually going to go three down. And what that's going to do is allow me to go underneath that road. And so I do want to bulldoze this little section right here. We're going to have to remake our, uh, our schooling area right there. We just totally demolished it. So we want to bring this up and we want it to go like right there i'm gonna go one below the ground and then that way i can bring it up right there and so now we have created an awesome connection right there and what i would like to do is something similar on this side just i don't know how easy of a connection this is gonna be maybe we actually just turn this one in and dump it into this connection so let's um go ahead and turn this into a bridge we'll bring this up three go across and then go ahead and bring this down now go up let's go ahead and bring this all the way up so we'll go like this and I do still want to capture some of this turned orientation and so it's definitely something that we want to try to be mindful of with the smaller grids but I think that this is probably good right now let's go ahead and create a connection right there so we have a crossover we got a crossover right there and so this is looking pretty good I like this little uh, service interchange we got an awesome little some room for maybe some park space something like that so now let's start jumping into some of our smaller grid patterns so we are going to just go ahead and use our standard two two unit two lane road with trees and so I want to follow a similar pattern to what we had so let's go ahead and capture this we're going to go out two and a half and let's go ahead and turn off road guidelines so we don't get that weird diagonal we'll go like this and then let's go up one and a half and so now let's go ahead and copy that we're going to go up one and a half we're going to go up one and a half and we're going to go up one and a half and so the idea here is that we're going to basically mimic our pattern and so if you have an issue like that what you want to do is actually just go in and delete that road and then have it go up to where it connects with that road guideline so we'll go like right there and then that way we can come back to this go like that and then have it curve into the initial connection and there we go and so the idea is that we're going to have this turn and it's going to create some more interesting layouts in here all right so now what we can do with this other side is go ahead and have this continue on but create have the grid pattern kind of mesh with this road up here and it's going to create a really fun pattern for us so if we go ahead and go two and a half out and go down and so let's go ahead before we finish this out i want to create some transit corridors and this is one of the things that you can do to ensure that your transit kind of blends in with your city rather than just throwing it in afterwards so we're actually going to go in here and i want to do an elevated metro just because i'm kind of a stickler for it and so i do want this to come over here so I think we're going to, you know, and I hate to do it, but we're going to get rid of one of these paths. We're going to have our first station right here. And I think this is just such a great location for it. So if we go ahead and place it right there, what we can do is go back into our paths and hopefully connect that up. I, but I believe we can't. So if we go into snapping, if we were playing with, with mods, I would just have this connection go across. I don't think we can do it though. Yeah, we can't. It's not going to let us go below the building. But I really like this asset for being an almost vanilla asset. It has this... Um, you know, a little connection right here. This actually might be vanilla. I don't know if it came with green cities or industries. I'm not entirely certain. But now we need to kind of map that out again. So we want to come out here and we don't want to have too many connections with this. So I think what we're going to do is go ahead and do one right here. So let's um, jump above ground. Let's do a connection right here. Yeah, you know, perfect. And so we have a stop right there, stop right there. We would want to have a stop over here somewhere getting around that highway is going to be tricky and this is something that is just you're just going to have to deal with it because we want to do that big bus station down there we don't have um, the big bus station just yet we actually don't have any bus stations we would have to do a custom one what i'm thinking is maybe connecting it up right here 
And then that'll actually allow us to uh, kind of turn and follow the highway down, which could actually be a really good strategy. So let's um, come in here and we are going to place one right there. We need to uh, make sure that we didn't disconnect anything. We didn't. And so now let's go back in there and we want this to follow the highway up. So if we have this turn and go above the highway, possibly even right here. So if we have this break off right here, come down here, what we can do is create a little center in here. So what I'm thinking is maybe the zoo right there. And then let's do a road. So if we go ahead and create a grid pattern in here, we'll change orientation again. So now what we can do with this space is actually go ahead and just connect that across, turn this into a path and then make a stop right here. So if we go like right there, it's going to really allow us to create some cool looks in here and it's going to allow us to do some curves. So if we grab this, come down here and then go into the free form tool, we can now curve this into this other road. We'll go like this, line it up, and then we're going to go ahead and leave this middle section empty for another little park or city center, some sort of space like that, something nice. And so now we have a stop right there, stop right there, stop right here, stop right here. And then we don't really have any other access. We do have a train stop. So we could do a train station in here as well, which could actually work out really well. So let's actually come in here and we're going to do a train station across the street. And this is going to allow us to start getting some inner city people in here, which is great. What that means is people coming in and out um, from out of the city. Metro doesn't have that ability. Bus does if you have a bus station, um, but trains do. And this is a really big method. You end up getting a ton of people coming into your city. And so I think this is fun. So now what's left is for us to connect this up. So we're going to go into not trains. Um, Metro. So we're going to grab this. We don't need to do a one way. We want this to go straight. It looks like we're like not connected up with that. Yeah, we are. So now we'll come like this cross over. Let's go ahead and have it follow this road just because I think it's going to create a little nicer of a connection for us. This looks pretty good already. Um, I like our new Metro line. I really like doing these in cities. This is going to look really cool, especially as we expand. And so now we have a stop right there. Stop right here. Stop right here. I do kind of wish we had a stop over there, but I think what we're going to eventually do is kind of wrap this around. And so now let's go ahead and hook up our train. And so I think we are going to just do a train crossing instead of actually elevating it just because our train coming off of here is not elevated and I really wouldn't want to create a grade unnecessarily. So it does kind of suck as a train comes, it's going to um, put a crossing, but it's something, you know, you have to deal with in cities. And so I think it's maybe a little more realistic. Maybe we could even come in here and delete that since it's a little too close. And then we'll come in here and do some park space and stuff. And so now that we have that, let's go ahead and do our road layout. Let's continue our road layout. So what I'm going to do is do the same grid over here, but then I want to change the orientation and have it go this way. And then I want to follow this across and then we can come in and start doing some zoning. And so I do want to leave a space on this side for a zoo. So we will come up over here and connect this across. And I'm going to go ahead and get it done real quick. All right. And so here we go. And so I created a few more little points of interest. Um, I want to do a park right here, but then I want to do a commercial center right here. And what I want to do is get a roundabout in here. So I think what we're going to do is go ahead and trim these back. Let's go ahead and go like this. And we're going to jump into a dirt road and roundabouts are actually pretty easy to use. The base game does have roundabouts. Um, I don't tend to use them as much. I don't really uh, like them. I don't, I don't think they're bad, um, but I just think um, building at your own is always going to be a better solution. So what you want to do is just make sure that all four of your corners are even. And this is something that is very similar to the little circles that we did for our trumpet and also our partial clover leaf. And so now we just want to go all the way around, loop it up, go like this. And you do want to keep your connections there while you connect it up. So we're going to go ahead and go like this. We're going to connect this up. Let's go ahead and connect this up. And then let's go ahead and do one on this side as well. And then once you have those, what you want to do is go ahead and upgrade to your one way. And if you have the plazas and promenades DLC, then you actually have three lane one ways and four lane one ways, which is a fantastic addition for that DLC. I was really happy to see that. So now we have a roundabout and then we're going to do some commercial in here. And I think this is going to be in a fun little center. If we had parking, I'd probably put that in there. But I do want to get a metro stop over here since this is going to be a big point of interest. So I think what we're going to do is go ahead and break up this grid and place it right there. And then let's just come straight across and then we will begin to turn this. So now we can come up here and go like right there. And then let's grab that freeform tool, come up here and turn this across. It does look like we're going to have a little bit of an issue doing these corners over, over roads can present a problem. But um, if you just, you know, stay persistent with it, you normally get it pretty good. 
and so we will come across and let's actually draw this in first so if we go like that and then connect this up let's go ahead and look at that yeah that looks pretty good and then now we have created even more accessibility so metro stop metro stop we could do another one right here i think that would probably be smart so let's go ahead and place one right here come across let's place this like right there just to provide a little bit of access to this neighborhood we are a little bit off which i'm not too worried about it doesn't need to be perfect but having it look good is is equally important and so we will then go ahead and just trim this back a couple and then let's um, just connect this up. So it's gonna go a little diagonal. It's not the end of the world though. So now we have created even more accessibility over here, over here, over here, three, four, five, six. We've got six Metro stops. This is really a big move for us. And then we're gonna connect it up with buses. We're gonna do buses through this whole area. And it's really gonna help out with traffic a ton, especially with this uh, train station over here. So now I wanna jump into the services and the Green Cities DLC. So we really need to place down a few services. And what we could do is actually, because it's such a large area, we can create a hospital center and also a big fire station and a big police station. And this actually, you know, does tend to work out in your favor. So the big upside to these is your water usage and your electricity, which really doesn't come out to too much of a, of a difference. Um, so it honestly could be better to just continue using these police stations because I want to do a bigger center though. We're actually going to uh, place these down. So I want to do, I'm thinking right here off of this road would just be a fantastic space for a nice little hospital. So if we grab our road, let's go into just a small, yeah, we'll do this little grass one. I think that this is going to be nice. So we will have it come off the backside and we'll have it loop around, come up here and let's go ahead and come all the way down here and then connect it up. And then let's go into our hospital and place this right there. You know what? I think that looks fantastic. I kind of wish that that parking wasn't there, but and so we're going to come back through here and do some, uh, some detailing, probably even a small little park, turned it into a nice space. So now I want to go into our fire station and maybe this little area up here, this could actually be a nice spot. So if we go up here, let's go ahead and do a road right there and let's do something similar. So we're going to have this go right there come down here and then probably connect up right there. And then let's actually have this continue and then go up here and then connect up again. So we'll probably do the police station and the fire station here. And the reason for that is because it really helps with inter interagency cooperation. So like a lot of times fire departments and police stations will have to work together on certain things like, you know, car crashes or anything major, like say there's a crime, a lot of times um, they'll all be working together. And so it's nice having them close together. I know in Las Vegas, um, it's pretty common to have them close together. And so now let's go ahead and look at our public libraries and our education, since we know that that is so important. And so let's come in here. Let's go ahead and do a public library off of this main road right here. I think that this would just be the perfect little spot for this. I kind of don't want to put it right off the road, though. So if we go ahead, so that's going to be our little little commercial center. Let's go ahead and have it go the opposite direction. We're going to go right there. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing over here right next to our little uh, metro stop since this would be a point of interest. So I think that that is pretty good right there. And then now let's look at some of the buildings that we have unlocked with the Green Cities. So with the Green Cities DLC, you get the Community School, the In Institute of Creative Arts, and the Modern Technology Institute, which all three of these are just fantastic buildings. I really like them. They do have reduced capacity versus the standard building. So the standard elementary school has a capacity of 300 with a cost of 160 per week. So this has a cost of 240 per week, but it has a student capacity of 250. So it costs more and it has less capacity, but I believe that this actually bump up your land value a little more than the standard elementary. So I want to place a couple of these. So I think we're gonna come up over here. Let's go ahead and do a small road. Let's have it go both ways and let's actually have it cut right there and then we will have it cut right here and we got to make sure that we remove them um, any traffic lights off of that so let's do our elementary right here and let's put our school right next to it so we're going to do our small playground go like that and then now we need to do let's go ahead and check out our coverage so we got we're definitely going to need probably one more let's go ahead and place another one back here go like this and there we go man we're really pumping along so now let's go ahead and do one of these Institute of, Institute of Creative Arts. I don't want to get too crazy with this. So let's do the same thing. We're going to jump into a road. We're going to have this come in, go like that. Perfect. And then let's do this. And then let's do a couple of the basketball courts. So we'll grab this, go like that, and go like that. Fantastic. That fit in actually really well. 
And so we pretty much have every service. We do need to do another cemetery. And then I want to dive into some more of the unlocked buildings. And it's kind of cool that Green City's DLC really has so much. I mean, it's just amazing. So the, the Sports Hall and Gymnasium, which I really love. These are fantastic. I like placing these with high schools too. But then also the Community Pool and the Yoga Garden. These are really great buildings to boost up land value. It's almost like a cheat. Like if you just place down Yoga Gardens and then Snowfall also has saunas and then um, community pools, the land value in your area just explodes. Um, the downside to them is they're really expensive. So like this yoga garden is 1600 a week. And then this uh, community pool is 1200 a week. So you really gotta be careful. So now what I would like to do is go ahead and place a few of these community pools around. So I wanna just go ahead and place these off the corners. I don't really need to do a couple, like a, a whole center like we did before. We are definitely running a little low on cash. Let's just keep it at that one. And then we will expand more of those as we uh, kind of get some more money. We do need to go in here and place just some of these small parks. So we want to come in here. Let's go ahead and place one right there. And these don't need to have any precise movement. You just want to have a decent amount. It's good to have a lot of parks. These really help your city to uh, grade. And then um, they really help your tax revenue making more money. It really is important for these. So we got a lot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got ten new parks in here, which is great. Looks like we have definitely uh, neglected this little area down here. Maybe we'll do a little bit bigger of a park. So let's do this one. And then I want to do a bigger park actually right here. So let's um actually remove these, remove that, remove that. And then let's do this bigger park. And we'll do this little playground right here. And then let's do the dog park on that corner. And we're going to come in here and do some paths and stuff similar to what we did before. This is another reason that I'm not a huge fan of park life because it's really easy for you to just design your own parks. And so now we do need to um, start zoning this in and making some money because we're, we're going to start having some issues. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down some water pipes real quick. OK, so we have definitely spent a lot of money. And so now let's go ahead and start zoning some of this out. So with the Green Cities DLC, you get three new specializations, which is one of the reasons why I chose it. I had completely forgotten that it came with all three. So one of my favorites is this self-sufficient building, and this comes in low density and high density, and they are just fantastic looking buildings. Very similar to like the mid-century modern. They're really clean buildings. They look really good. And then um, the high rises are just absolutely awesome. I really like them. They have like urban gardens, urban roof gardens, stuff like that. They just look really cool. They're uh, updated materials and um, they really help to make downtowns or high rise neighborhoods look good. Um, another specialization you get is the IT cluster, which is actually the tallest buildings in the vanilla game. And so when placed like building downtowns, this is definitely something that you wanna get into along with another uh, DLC, the mid or the content creator pack modern city centers because those allow you to get the wall-to-wall -wall, similar to the plaza and promenades dlc you get a uh, wall-to-wall -wall downtown buildings which is really cool and so a third specialization that you get with the green cities man this really just has so much value is the organic and local produce which is just awesome you get little uh, little stalls you get little hostels little organic um, grocery stores it's really cool. I mean, a lot of times I'll use organic and local produce with like small districts where I'll just do like a little corner, maybe like a walking mall with like a market or something. And it's um, just a really fun way to get some cool shopping in there. And so we do want to utilize some of these. So I know I want to utilize the self-sufficient for quite a bit of this. So we are going to come across and go like this. And I think we're going to turn this into a small little uh, shopping center Though we want to be careful not to turn these roads into just crazy strodes. And so we want to come up here now and let's actually extend this across. We'll have this come down and go like this and we will um, go ahead and keep this as a district. We'll probably even come down here. This is going to be our uptown. So maybe we'll actually not mess around with that, that right now. And then let's go ahead and zone all this in as well as a separate district. And if you guys have any fun names for this, go ahead and let me know. Um, if you guys have any fun names for the agricultural area as well. And that's just a really fun way to, you know, personalize your city, make it personal. You can really come up with any name that you, uh, that you want. And so let's look at the standard names that we got. So we got Belmont Park, Moore Hills. And so uh, now what we need to do is go back down to that districts and areas tab, go over to our residential specialization and go ahead and just tap this. We're actually gonna do it for both of them. And so uh, another thing that you can do, you can mix these. So if, as long as they're not the same special, like residential or commercial or office, you can go ahead and turn them on for all of them. Um, we don't want IT cluster in there, but we do want organic and local produce for a lot of it. We're not going to do all organic and local produce, but we'll definitely do for some. So I don't think we're going to go right there. We're going to go ahead and turn this because I want those to be organic and local produce. 
And then I want this little section to be organic and local produce, but I want to get some office space in here too and really get some fun stuff going. So I want to do another office park similar to what we had there. But what I'm thinking is down here, so maybe we'll um, go ahead and shift this across the street. We'll go like right there and then let's build a small office park like right here. Nothing too crazy, just something that's going to really help, uh, you know, turn this metro stop into something special. So if we go ahead and connect this up, let's go ahead and connect these up. Let's go down. I would prefer that to be even. So I'm going to bring this back. We'll go like this, connect this up. And then let's just do some small office zoning. Nothing too crazy. We're just going to do a couple little four by slots with some plazas. So now let's come over here, do the same thing. We'll do one four by, come over here, do that. And there we go. I think that that is already pretty good. And then we can do some more over here. This can actually be really good right in front of this train station. We could do a couple little small shopping centers too. I actually think that might be better. So if we come in here, do a little four by slot, switch over four again, let's go like this, go like this. And then let's um, go ahead and just do the same thing on the opposite side. And we'll leave some space in the middle to do uh, some parks and stuff like that. And then this actually helps to create a point of interest for this area so that people would want to come down here. So that people take the metro, get off the, you know, the, the train and then just walk across the street and there's shopping or maybe this is where they work and just really makes it worth it. And so, and so now what we can do is come over here and instead of actually doing a little inlet, we'll just do some small office kind of following that same pattern over here. And we're skipping these so that we can get a little more uh, unique with the designs. Like we can do some trees or plazas in the middle. Just make them a little more like unique. Now, if you're in like a downtown or something, you definitely want to capture that look. But in this more like suburban rule, I think that this tends to look a little bit better. Um, for our residential though, we are going to continue using our low density. We are going to skip zoning off of this road and it's okay. We're going to lose a little bit of zoning. We're going to lose about like this much. It's not the end of the world though. It allows us to maybe do um, some little spaces in there or something fun. Then we'll come in here, go ahead and do this. And then we do need to come back and do uh, some of our walking paths. So we'll zone all this in. And then let's come down here, do the same thing. We'll just zone all this and just get crazy with it. We'll do the same thing over here, zone all this in as low density. And then we'll do another little shopping center right there. Let's go ahead and zone this in, go like this, perfect. And then we can zone this in. This is similar to an arterial, but it's not. So I think we're going to uh, go ahead and zone that in. Go ahead and go like this. Yeah, you know what? I think that this looks pretty good. This allows just some small little neighborhood shops in here. Again, we don't want to drive too much traffic because this is really where you, you start running into some major issues if you just start generating, driving a ton of traffic to those areas. So that's coming here. Let's zone this in, especially right next to that park. That would be really high value area. And you know what? I think that this is probably good. We don't want to get too crazy with this. So we um, definitely want to get a little more commercial. So we got some office space. Let's do just a smidge of commercial in here. So we'll go like this. We're going to do that checkerboard pattern again, just to get a nice look in there. Maybe we'll do just a small bit of high density residential. You just really want to be careful with that because you don't want to get too crazy with this. One of the biggest problems with high density residential is that, um, you'll get like a weird stepping pattern if you uh, kind of just, you know, put a high density building right next to a low density. So you really want to be careful about it. Um, so we may even come back through here and remove this. It is going to help out with residential, um, our population, but it could end up making our city look a little weird. So now let's go ahead and unpause. And what we're going to do is just wait for it all to grow in and then we'll kind of reassess it and see like what we need to adjust. And okay, so our area is coming in pretty nicely. And so if you're noticing whenever you're zoning that you're getting patches, what that means is it's normally proximity to services or amenities like commercial. And so we can come down here and see that our demand is for medium commercial now. And so if we go into the info panel, we can go into land value and see that there are some pockets of this green where it's around the school or around shopping of some kind or around like this is high density with some more shopping and some other commercial. There's just a lot more amenities in the area. And so since this area right here really doesn't have a whole lot, there's just not a huge draw. And so we have this park right here. There's really no commercial. And so what we need to do is now place down just a little bit of commercial. So what I want to do is come in here and do a small district, just this little section and we're gonna go into organic and local produce and I wanna create a little kind of walking mall. So we're going to go in and I'm gonna turn on snapping so I can get this all the way around. 
So I want to go literally all the way around. We're going to go like this and connect it up right there. And so we do want to have a couple other connections in this. We'll probably just go like that. You know, that's probably good. So we got an in and an out. And so what we want to do is go ahead and jump in here. And I want to get small zoning on this. We want this to go like that. We want this to go like this. And we want this to go like this. And the reason we're doing this is because this really gives you some awesome looking buildings in here. So now we're going to do the same thing on this side and then we are going to leave a space in the middle to do a plaza. So let's actually jump in here. We're going to go to plazas and I want to do this bigger one if I can. It looks like we can't. So we're actually just going to do that standard one and let's go ahead and check out these buildings now. So these buildings are just awesome. I absolutely love the organic and local produce. I think they're just super fantastic. Especially you get a lot of these little container ones like with these little chairs and stuff. So I definitely think the Green Cities DLC is probably one of my favorites. But then like look at this too. Like this is just so cool. Like this is, we've got a little, uh, you know, shopping center coming in. We've got a big parking lot back here. So this is definitely the DLC where you can get parking lots. So like this is just an electric parking, um, which I think is not very fitting for the series. So we're actually going to demolish it and try to get another building in there. Um, but this is already going to boost the land value in this area quite a bit. And this should help with people moving in right there. It's going to create some jobs and really get people moving in. Another thing we could do is maybe place another park. We do still need to hook up our metro line. So let's actually do that to provide a little more access. So let's go into our transport tab, make sure we're in metros, then go to this metro line tool. And so we're going to grab this, hit right there, come down here, and then go down here. And we're going to have it come this way. Then we're gonna have it go back. And so now we have one metro line that comes down here, turns, goes up here. So we basically connected it all up with one line, which is fantastic. And so we do need to do a little uh, walking path over here as well. We wanna provide some accessibility over to that metro stop. So we're going to jump into paths, have this go all the way across. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. But what we need to do is have a little crossing. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna go up one since I'm on the biggest step. We'll go like this and we'll go back down go down one and then have this go all the way across. And then now let's go ahead and connect this up. We want to make sure that that's not too tall. So that's, I mean, it's definitely a little tall. What we can do is um, just stretch it out a little more. So we'll grab this, go out a little bit more, go up one, come across, and then go down here and connect it up. And there we go. So now it's a little bit better. It still is pretty tall, but it would just help to provide that uh, accessibility over here, which is super important. So now what I want to do is go ahead and create some connectivity in here before we uh, really get everybody grown in. This is something that we should have done at the beginning, but I completely forgot. So we want to come in here and we're going to have to demolish some buildings just because this is going to be super important for us. So we want to go all the way across. What this is going to do is provide people avenues to cut across without having to uh, walk all the way down the streets because our grids really aren't too big. We still do have some pretty good walkability, but having these paths are really gonna help out a lot. So we're gonna go all the way across. What I'm gonna do is just basically put in paths going all the way through these sections, but then I'll come back and we'll do some little curved ones, do some trees and stuff, really kind of make them look better. Okay, so we got paths going all the way through and I ended up extending our paths through here too, just to create a little more of a unique design. Um, I do want to come in here and actually like that these are all the same buildings. I think that's very fitting. It looks really cool, especially with that little park in there. Now we need to do our other commercial centers because we're kind of back where we were with medium de demand for commercial. So I want to do a couple more of those organic and local produce sections over here. So we're going to go up. We're going to have this come down and we will go like that. And I don't want to connect it up right before that roundabout. That would be really bad. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and loop this around. We'll go like this. And then that way what we can do is jump in here. Let's do the same thing. So we're going to make a little small district and we'll turn this into like, you know, a shopping center or something, a marketplace. We'll go like this. And something you can do with these two is do um, like maybe a unique building or something fun like that as well. Um, maybe we'll jump into the unique buildings and kind of see. So unique buildings are in this little unique buildings tab that is right next to this parks and plazas. And so you do have to go through and unlock all of these. I've already unlocked all of them in the game. But you need to go through and they each have like uh, requirements. Some of them are really crazy and some of them are actually pretty easy to get. Um, it does look like it's kind of funny. I guess um, I, I missed one. So 25% of population highly educated. I thought I had them all, but I, I guess not. <laughs> um, so I'm missing one. 25% uh, of population highly edu educated. So academic library. So in order to get this, we would just need to have 25% of population highly educated and you get it. And so now let's go ahead. Let's see. What's this one right here? So services. Let's do one of these parks. I feel like this could actually be good. So let's do another road in here and we'll have this come down and connect up right there. 
And then let's have this loop around, do the same thing as the other side. We'll go like this and just go up. And then that way we can jump back into that unique building and put it right there. Yeah, look at that. We could even do another one on this side. So I think what we're gonna do on this side is just do a park because the organic and local produce is a little, uh, it's got a different vibe. Like I don't think we wanna put something in that's a little too posh in there. And so I think this would def just be the better call. So I do want to connect this up and then I want to come over here and connect this up as well. And then let's go into our zoning and let's zone this in. We actually need to uh, make sure we go in here and hit that organic and local produce. And then let's um, go back into our zoning and go in here. I want to do little four by slots. We're going to go like that. We're going to go like that. We're going to do the same thing on this side. So we're going to go four by, go like that. And then we're going to do the same thing on this, this side. But then I want to do those small buildings around. So we're going to go like this. We're going to come down, go like this. And we're going to do the same thing on this side, do the one buys. We're going to do the same thing on these ones. We're just going to do the little one by slots. We're going to go all the way down, go like this. Perfect. And then we can even do a little bit of a bigger one right there. And let's just, just do some small ones. And then that way we have a little bit more shopping in here, but it's a little more controlled. It's not just getting crazy with it. And so we have a couple little pockets in here. This should really help with our growth. It does look like we, um, we should check out our education. So our elementary is pretty good. And our high school is pretty good. So we got an elementary right there, elementary right there. I'm thinking maybe another elementary would be smart in here. I think maybe that's why we're not getting um, any people moving in. So hey, you know what, that actually looks pretty good. And then that way, that way what we can do is actually just place another small playground right there across the street. And so it's like the school kind of feeds off of that. And so now we have some pretty good coverage. Um, one of the cool things is, you know, these are the self-sufficient buildings that I was kind of talking about. You can see that they got trees on top of the roofs and I really like, they got like desert landscaping very eco-friendly, but they're really well detailed buildings. Um, and that's why, I mean, these buildings tend to be um, one of my favorites. I use these a lot. Um, I don't tend to use these elementary and high schools that much, but they do have a lot of great details. Like look at this front, this is just really cool. And it's got this, you know, ramp in the back kind of stairs, just really cool details, awesome looking buildings. And so now what we need to do before we jump into our detailing time-lapse, we do need to get some other things going. So our office is just not growing in. We're just not getting anything back there. And then I think we're going to do some park space in here. I think that that would be good. So let's actually place down a couple big parks in here while we're waiting. And then that way we can do some paths in here and really turn this into a nice area. It does look like we're having some issues. So this is another one of those notifications. So sewage is backing up. So sewers are backing up. People will fall, will fall ill if nothing is done. Make sure you have drain pipes to dispose of dirty water. And so um, we do get a new drain pipe with the Green Cities DLC. I don't know if we've unlocked it yet. So you get this water treatment plant, but you also get this eco water treatment plant and this uh, eco water outlet. So I think you already got the water treatment plant. We got the eco one now, but we do have the eco water outlet um, still similar to what we had, but possibly a little better. So let's actually go through here and, uh, and delete these and see if we can combat our pollution problem by hooking up an eco one. I'm not sure if it just has like a small filter. It's green. So, I mean, it, it looks a little better. Let's see if it still uh, does sludge. Yeah. I mean, it's still sludge. Yeah. I mean, look at this. It's just so dirty. I mean, it even kind of looks like it's polluting the ground over here, but it's just, or, um, so let's go look at our area. This is coming together pretty nicely. Um, I really like a lot of the designs we got, especially once we come through here and do some trees and stuff, it's really going to look good. Um, we do need to still wait. looks like our housing's coming in. Um, that should have fixed our problem. Ooh, you know what? Uh, the capacity for these is less. Ooh, that was good thing I caught that. So we need to do like two more of these. Yeah, we'll go like that. I guess I never realized that. I never use these. And so, um, yeah, the, the capacity was way down. So we'll go like that. Let's make sure that we are hooked up. Go like this. Voila. Now we're good. Now our city should be good. All right. And so I think this is looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and let this run for a bit. And uh, we should get the rest of our housing in. We still are having a little bit of a commercial demand, but it's best to keep this a little low. You don't want to get too crazy with commercial. Um, and it looks like we're still getting houses. Our residential demand is kind of creeping up, which is good. And so we will uh, see you when we come back. All right, and so we have finally hit big city. This was our goal, 15,000. And we unlock a couple key buildings for us. So water treatment plants, so we can stop polluting our water. But then the crematorium, which we really need to place down. So let's go ahead and jump out of here. We really don't get a whole lot else with this one. So I do want to turn this area into a cemetery slash crematorium area. 
So I think what we're going to do is go ahead and jump into a road. And I want this to go straight off of here. And I want it to come down here and connect up right there. Then we're going to have this come off like right there. And let's put in a couple cemeteries. We'll go right there. Let's go right here. And then let's do a crematorium right in the middle. I think maybe if we do one over here, this could be good. So let's do another cemetery over here. We've been kind of neglecting this area. So if we have this go off like right here, have it come down here just to provide a little more coverage over here. And then we'll put in some trees and stuff, just make it look a little bit better. But I really like this area. I really like these buildings. This is definitely going to be one of my top DLCs. I would definitely recommend this for new players just because how much it gives you with the new schools and with um, the new buildings like organic and local produce and then the self-sufficient and the IT buildings. It really just gives you a whole lot. And so another thing that I'd done over here in our little kind of mini midtown, um, I did end up changing some of the zoning around. And this is something that you can do to capture just some different looks. So with our little four by spacing, I went ahead and put in some high density commercial, some low density commercial, and then some more offices. I even splattered a little bit of a high density residential in there. And it really helps to capture like some layers in there. And just some different looks instead of having like the same building it really helps you to capture kind of like a downtown look which i really like and we are starting to get just a ton of people using our trains like whenever the train comes in we just have a ton of people come down here we're having a lot of people use our metro so if we actually jump in here and go into lines overview it's going to pull up our transit tab which you can actually get to in the info views as well if you just click on this so if you go like that it'll pop up this little window you can just hit this and it'll open up this box so we want to navigate to the metro line and we want to hit this little hour little uh magnifying glass and this is going to show us how many people are waiting how efficient this line is so car trips save 12 and we can see so we only have four lines and we have a lot of people waiting potentially leaving People end up leaving if they're waiting for too long. So I think what we're going to do is bump this up to six. And what I'm hoping, because this line is a little bit bigger, we may even need to do seven. So let's um let's pump up the speed a little bit and see if it drops six in there. So one right there. Okay, so it looks like eight vehicles was the magic number. You want them to be at least half full with possibly even some a little more. So like this is 124 out of 150 and we don't have any major stops that are just super filled now. We can actually click on this and it'll bring you to the station that is becoming super busy, so it's this one. It's kind of funny, it's because this area that we built out, we didn't really put anything near it, and so everybody's seeking to travel somewhere else. Let's go ahead and check out our traffic as well. So this one road is becoming a major road for us, and it's because it's coming down here to this uh, roundabout, but then also because of our industrial area right here. So this is kind of showing us that maybe we could do with another connection of some kind, um, and so I think as we expand, we'll probably put in another freeway connection and then we'll have this kind of loop around and then connect up over here and over there. And so it'll probably provide a little bit of relief for this area just so that we can split it. This isn't bad though. We're at 90% traffic flow 91, which is pretty good. And so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and jump into a detailing time lapse. It does look like we're having a little bit of water issues right here. Yeah, we are. So let's connect this up real quick. Go like that. Perfect. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put in some trees. I want to do uh, some decorations along our paths. I want to decorate up our little schooling areas and our uh, organic and local produce areas and really just tie all this in together. And so I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you guys on the other side.
Okay, I am finally finished, and that actually took a little while. So I um, first thing we, I did, I went over here and did a path going down with a nice green space. So I did end up leaving these empty. I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do right here. But a lot of times, this is just all you really need to do is put in a path, do some trees, and it really helps to bring it all together. I like the botanical garden. I decided to do some palm trees over here. Um, one of the cool things I did over here, I did a little fence with these little garden kind of walking spaces in between these buildings. And it really helps to kind of separate them, but also accentuate the buildings a bit. Went ahead and put in trees in here. Um, didn't get too crazy in a lot of these sections. Did some more uh, fencing back here to, again, uh, accentuate that path and the buildings. And then I went through and placed trees all around all of our buildings. And then I did end up doing um, little areas around like our services as well as our hospital over here. I did um, some bushes to kind of help that hide that ruining. Um, trees over here did the same thing with the with the bushes. Um, this really is like, I mean, just one of the best best tips. If you can hide this ruining with those bushes, it makes areas look so much better. And then for most of my schooling areas, I did a fence around some foliage so that maybe this would be like an area that they go into and kind of just hang out or maybe it's just landscaping them. But then I did bushes with the young lindens in the front and some trees going around and I pretty much did that for all of our schooling areas. So like that one um, and then this one over here, this one looks a little bit better. I think it has some more open space, like maybe this is a field where they do some sports or something like that. Um, for our organic and local produce places, I kind of I wanted to match them. So I did little uh, bush lined pathways with some young lindens. Again, this would just be a nice area to kind of walk through. Then I did the jicama trees around the outside and then I did some purple bushes in here just because you want to kind of change it up a little bit. Some trees all the way around to tie it in together and we did still leave a lot of stuff open. And again, you know, just like I said before, you really want to leave space for you to develop later on. Because if you just go square by square, you end up kind of boxing yourself out. Whereas cities don't really develop like that. Cities will develop with empty spaces in between and so... We still have a lot of room to be able to come back through here and, and upgrade stuff. And I really want to do a zoo right there. I really want to come through here and, and just place in some more stuff, like maybe some unique buildings or bigger parks or whatever comes our way. But I think this episode was a huge success. We got people just walking around like crazy in here. As I was detailing, I was just looking at everybody kind of walk around. And it really is just a lot. Like we got everybody using these paths. If we come back here. It's just crazy. I ended up putting in this path because uh, there were so many people walking down this street, which, yeah, if we come over here. So I guess they're all coming over to the metro stop, which is a little more understandable. Um, I, as I was detailing this, there was a bunch of people walking up here. So I was like, maybe I should do a path, but it looks like it's not too bad now. Um, but if we come in here, we can see a ton of people walking down these little pathways in between the houses, which is fantastic to see. It actually doesn't look like too much, but you see all these people on the streets, which is really nice. The more people you can get to walk, the better. That's really the key. Every single one of these people walking is a car that's not on your road. And so that helps with traffic. It really helps with a lot of stuff in your city a lot. So you can kind of see all these people walking around. Let's check out some of our metro stops. Ooh, so look at this one. This one's pretty busy. There's uh, quite a few people coming in and out, going up the little escalators. I think the big one, though, is over here in this section. So if we come over here, let's look at this one. Uh, you know, it's actually not as busy as it was. I think it's because we we just have all those those uh, metros now, and so they're not really backing up. But I think this is a really cool build. Um, go ahead and let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you enjoyed this episode, you will definitely enjoy the episode on your screen. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one.